Hi. So here we are back in my studio. Today is my 65th, no, 56th, no, 65th. I always get it wrong because in Germany they count backwards. They always say 56 instead of 65. And uh, sometimes you get your numbers turned around. But today is my 56th birthday. And this is my son, the last man with the horn, YouTube 22. We faded up with a picture of my son and I. And Mike, if you can just turn and take a picture of that. That's what we faded out with. Sean was eight at that picture. It was in the summertime. And here he is, my son, Sean Gabriel. He's 26 now. He just had his birthday in December, December the 15th, right, Sean? Right. Yeah, I named Sean, Sean Gabriel after uh, the angel blowing trumpet Gabriel and Sean Connery, a real Scottish man's man. In the, mm, we are Celts and, uh, well, the Stewart family, I think it's, internationally quite well known. What is the Stuart battle cry? Now, courage grows at a wound. Courage grows at a wound. If you have been reading any of the short stories that I've been writing for Sonic uh, magazine uh, about my life, uh, uh, Portrait of an Artist is a Strange in a Strange Land, I think you'll probably realize that uh, Things don't always just run rosy and perfect for uh, an artist in this world, as does it never for all people. The reality is this, not everybody's on your side, and uh, the better you get at what you're doing, the more people want to be doing what you're doing, and they don't understand why you are not necessarily on the top, but near the top. They want to climb on top of you to get farther ahead. And sometimes they'll do bad things. Uh, usually it ends up coming back very quickly on themselves, but if you don't re maintain a sense of humor and understand that not everybody's on your side, think that, you know, put on rose-colored glasses, then you'll be pretty unhappy in your life sooner or later. But I'm not unhappy with my life. I've survived now 43 years in Germany since 1978 when I came here. And that's not an easy feat. It's not an easy feat. So uh, I think what's important for, for me to tell you right now today is that I'm going to be doing a YouTube, releasing a YouTube a week until the end of my term here in November when I go into official retirement from the university, the Julius Maximilians University in the city of Würzburg. It's a Bavarian state university that I've been teaching at officially since 2001 and and originally from to 1983 uh, in Würzburg, the uh, conservatorium. I am actually the last, check this out, I'm the last Stadtpfeifer of Germany. Because the Stadtpfeifers of Germany were the people that played signal music from the, from the tower. They were the signal trumpeters, but they also played zinc. Cornetto, that's what that is up there. I told before, discussed it before. That was the premier solo instrument in the Renaissance and early Baroque period. Gottfried Reicher, uh, Johann Sebastian Bach, his solo trumpet was the Oberste Stadtpfeifer, the highest city musician in Leipzig in, from 1719 to 1734 when he died suddenly after playing a cantata in praise of the recently deceased elector of Saxony. His name was uh, August der Starke, August the Strong, who supposedly had 365 children. <laughs> but I'm not sure if that's just bragging. Uh, a lot of the time, the, these guys really were more interested in a personality cult than the reality of the situation. In any event, the reason I have this trumpet in my hand, even though I'm going to be talking about the trumpets that are behind me on the table right now, or parts of those trumpets, or another trumpet like that, the trumpet de Katja, or Jaeger trumpet, the instrument that Gottfried Reicher became famous with in Leipzig from uh, 17... From 16, uh, actually, 87, when he came to Leipzig and he learned to play with, with uh, Johann Peitzel, Peitzelius, and other great trumpet players that originally come from Weissenfels, 
the tradition of the uh, of the court musicians there, to and then when Petzilius went to Nuremberg to become a trumpeter there, he took more and more leading role and became the Oberste Stadtpfeifer, the leading Stadtpfeifer, the head city musician in 1719. Um, but here's the gag. You've been hearing the beginning of every one of these YouTubes, if you've looked at one or the other, and they all start with the man with the horn. It's, it's a piece that actually made, was actually uh, his, his uh, Akenong's melody, or his, his Remember Me, This Is Me, this is his most successful piece, I think, at the time, The Man with the Horn. And James, Harry James was the trumpet player that made that so famous, among other pieces. And uh, so that's what I'm playing at the beginning, and you don't hear it. Uh, you don't see me playing it, you just hear it. It was cut actually from, a, uh, the sound was cut from a, a lecture that he did on, uh, in November of 2017 in Leipzig, where uh, Gottfried Reicher was, did his work as the uh, Stadtpfeifer, uh, Oberster Stadtpfeifer, for, until his sudden death actually died in front of the rat house there, the old city hall. And um, in any event, this is a 1940 con Wachebell big band trumpet. It has no rim. And it's very hard. You can hear how it's tempered there. I, I'd like to think that if I had to go into battle, I could take it to shave, actually, if I could just, you know, but it's uh, sharp. But not only is it sharp, it's very thick, and it has really no dints in it. But when I bought it, it had one dint in it. It had one dint in the bell here, and that's why it didn't play. And so the man who actually offered to sell it to me, his name was Chuck Purrington, an American who lived in Berlin at the time, he didn't really know what to do with the trumpet, and he, he was afraid if he got the, it was difficult to get something that's tempered that hard, and, the, uh, the dent out of the bell, but I have a very good instrument maker named Heinz Pogense, who lives quite close to here in Leinach by Würzburg, and he got the dent out of the bell. And But I'd already bought the trumpet because I liked the design. It's an Art Deco trumpet, like uh, Art Deco. Well, if, for the Americans that don't know what Art Deco is, uh, a very good expression of Art Deco is even late Art Deco is the Empire State Building or even a better version would be the Chrysler building. But you can see that it has wonderful little water keys here reset uh, with uh, the springs inside. It's very cute. Looked like little toucans. Here, and uh, it has little, um, uh, well, actually, all, the design is sort of Darth Vader, actually, if you think about that, which is actually more Art Deco than anything else. Art Darth Vader from... Star Wars. This is the very first heavy mouthpiece that I had made to fit this mouth, fit this trumpet. And it was made actually in two parts because uh, um, it was difficult to make this design. So I actually it was two parts and then soldered together. It was made in uh, the Clear Factory, Joseph Clear Factory in Diesbeck by Neustadt Eich here in Germany in Franconia by Josef. Joseph Clear? No, his son, Roland, made it for me. Roland's about 80 now. He's retired. And he made it in two parts, handmade on the lathe, to fit this trumpet. So it's, it's more or less like a bayonet. It goes in and you, you know, it's tight. And this trumpet I played for a couple of very interesting things, but the most important thing uh, as lead trumpet of this, the second German radio and television big band. I did a few gigs with them, especially during the 90s, when I was doing other studio music in Munich, especially film music, with people from the Munich Philharmonic and the Bavarian Radio Orchestra and whatever. But to make a long story short, I wanted to play The Man with the Horn for you. So you can see me doing it on this trumpet. And I hope that Mike has got the, the uh, dial turned down, because this trumpet has a projection like Wild Horses. Um, as a matter of fact, the guy that used to, who made this trumpet, among others, Cootie Williams, made this trumpet famous, but also a guy named Al Porcino, who was the lead trumpet for 
the big band recordings of Frank Sinatra in New York in the 60s and 70s. I actually worked with him in the 80s, early 80s in Nuremberg when we were, I was recording for an ensemble that I'd named the Golden Brass. It became the, the pop part of German brass later, but together um, with uh, Enrique Crespo. Um, later we uh, formed the large ensemble German Brass. And um, our, I think our most important early recording was Bach 300, recorded in 84, came out in 85 to, to commemorate the 300th anniversary of Bach's birth, 1685. He lived to 1750. In any event, so The Man with the Horn is the piece that I play at the beginning. And it's the, uh, the, the, the melody that uh, Harry James used to play. And so here it is. <laughs> 